Welcome to the Sarkulis YouTube channel. I'm Sarah Hovsepian. A profit and loss statement is important because it tells a business whether they are profitable. A few years ago, I sat with a startup and I asked them what their profit margins were. And frankly, they didn't know the answer. And that was problematic. If you have no idea whether your business is generating a profit, then your business will very likely fail. And so this is why the profit and loss statement is very important. There are three key financial terms that we look at in a profit and loss statement. And by the end of this video, you're going to master what these three keywords are. You're going to be able to define them in your own words and understand how to apply them on an ARE 5.0 uh, problem or concept, have the chance to review. But above all, the profit and loss statement concept in this video will help you get smarter about your own finances, how to increase your own income, how to decrease your expenses, and ultimately create more profit to be able to live and have more freedom to do things that excite you. So let's start with those three key words in a profit and loss statement. The first one is revenue, which is the total dollars that a business generates from its sales of a product or service. That's revenue. And the second key word is your expenses. These are all the dollars that are going out of a business, the expenditures for things for keeping the lights on or for other um, consultants that you have to hire like accountants and lawyers. You have so many expenses. And finally, you have profit, the number that we're all very excited about, which is essentially your revenue minus your expenses is the profit, which is the total dollars that you can now save, reinvest into the business and pocket to be able to do other things with. So let's look at an example. And I want you to think about the first job you ever had. And let's say at this job you made $5,000 a month. So $5,000 a month was your total revenue, simplified. Now let's think about your expenses. Let's say that your expenses at this job came out to around $3,000 a month. So revenue minus expenses, your $5,000 minus your $3,000 was your $2,000 profit, but not so fast. You still had to pay your own income taxes. You had other things that would need to be deducted. So after taxes, then you would have your actual net profit of the, the total dollars that you would pocket to be able to save or reinvest. It's the same with a business. Just like the P&L for an individual, which we just did, simplified, we're going to do the same idea for an architecture firm or any company for that matter and look at it in terms of a, of a diagram or a model. So here's a diagram I created that shows you what the profit and loss statement looks like for an architecture firm. This is not the actual profit and loss statement. This is a model. It's a diagram. So I want you to take notes along with me and draw each of these boxes so you can get that practice with understanding what each of these terms mean. We begin with the architect's fee. The architect's fee is the total dollars or the total fee that the architecture firm is going to charge clients to do their project. So let's say in month one, here in an example, month one, we have a fee of $100,000 for one project. And then we have another fee of $200,000. And then we charge $50,000 for a third fee. That comes out to an architect's fee of $350,000. That's a total fee for the architect. So I want you to remember that box. And now let's leave that alone and go to the next line item in a P&L statement. That would be your reimbursable expenses. Now on every project, an architect will typically in their scope of services agreement, write what those reimbursable expenses are. It could be travel, it could be printing documents, it could be plan check fees. There's numerous reimbursable expenses that will be outlined in a contract with an owner. So those reimbursable expenses are not money that you're generating as an architect. Those are just out of pocket expenses, but you're getting reimbursed for those expenses. So those reimbursables related to projects are going to go with your architect's fee to be able to now come across our first key word in a profit and loss statement to generate your total revenue. 
Some folks like to call it a target revenue. This number is really important. Your target revenue is essentially the total dollars that an architecture firm needs to generate to be able to pay their consultants, to be able to keep the lights on, to be able to pay employees, and ultimately to be able to make a profit because without profit, we can't continue and be sustainable. So that total revenue is a very important number, but don't confuse that with profit because that is not all going into the architect's pocket. Let's look at where it is going. The next line item is gonna be your consultant fees. Now let's take a moment, we can talk at length about this, but here in California, if you're practicing or plan to practice architecture, according to the Architects Practice Act, the architect is in responsible control of the instruments of service, which mean all the construction drawings and all that, but also is in charge of coordinating and managing all the consultants on a team. Now, in California, an architect can decide to either hire their consultants or not. A lot of architects choose to have the owners hire their consultants. And we can create a whole nother video just discussing whether that's a good idea or not, but I'm not gonna get into that in this video. But for the purposes of NCARB, ARE, 5.0, practice management, project management, and how they're thinking about the exam, I want you to always think about and remember that the architect hires the major consultants. And those major consultants are the structural, electrical, mechanical, and plumbing. Sometimes civil, but for now, just remember those. Those consultant fees at the beginning of a project are uh, solicited via proposals. And then the architect will take those fees, wrap them into their own architect's fee, and charge the owner and the contract a total fee that includes the consultant fees. Again, for the purposes of NCARB studying for the AREs, I want you to think of it that way. Next important term that we get to in the PL statement now is your net operating revenue. Your net operating revenue. Some folks like to call it the net service revenue, but it means the same thing. And in an architecture firm, how you derive the net operating revenue is you take your total revenue or your target revenue and you subtract all the consultant fees and you get your net operating revenue. So think of it as these are the dollars left in a firm to be able to pay their employees, pay overhead costs, and pay themselves after they've already paid outside external consultants. So net operating revenue, as the word suggests, it has the word operating, it's the dollars left over just for the architecture firm operations. So revenue left over to operate. And we'll get into what each of those pieces mean. So target revenue or total revenue minus the consultant fees is your net operating revenue. That's your second key term in a P&L statement. Here's the next key term in a P&L statement, which are your expenses. Now, expenses can be further subdivided into two categories. There's direct expenses and indirect expenses. So if we start with your direct expenses, think of the word direct, and I want you to imagine direct as having direct correlation or directly related to a billable project or a project that we can charge for. So those direct costs include, what do we have on a project? We're we have expenses for paying for those employees, the drafters, the principals, the project managers, the PAs, and everybody else, right? Those are direct expenses, salaries, labor. Now let's look at indirect expenses. Indirect expenses are those dollars that are not directly attributable to a billable project. What does this mean? This means your administrator in the office or the accountant who works in-house, uh, those folks do not charge or bill a project because their work is just not related specifically to a project, but it's related to running a firm. So those are called indirect expenses, indirectly related to a project, but really not related to a project. So think of direct and indirect 
in those two ways. Indirect expenses can also include marketing, lawyers, taxes, rent, you know, leases, equipment, and more. When we take the net operating revenue and we subtract all those indirect and direct expenses, then the firm has that next keyword in a PL statement, which is profit. And it's as simple as that. But know that the PL statement, although it have those three key ingredients, those three terms that we've just discussed, the categories under those three key terms can be organized however a firm wishes. And so I've looked at a lot of PL statements uh, over the course of my career and they are there are a number of ways that depending on the size of the firm, depending on the types of projects that a firm has, the way that they even write the contracts, that a PL statement, the subcategories will be uh, organized a little different. But in general, understand that the PL, every PL will have your revenue, your expenses, and your profit. What you can do as a simple exercise for yourself, and I've enjoyed doing this, especially much more recently, is taking a PL statement in Excel. You can find a template or you can create your own and simply start with your own PL statement for you as an individual. If you don't run a firm, you can apply this as an exercise to yourself. Start with all your income. Take, if you have three income streams, two income streams, or one income stream, write that at the top of your Excel sheet. And that is your total revenue that's generated. And then you have your expenses. So make a budget. Look at your statements. I did this recently, and I like to do this often with my budgeting. I look at my statements. I look at what things have I missed as expenses that I'm not tracking. And then finally, subtract those, and you can look at how much profit you're generating for yourself, essentially how much you can save or how much you can reinvest in what you want to do with that money so you can be smart about how you plan for your own finances in the future. For the purposes of the ARE 5.0 PCM or PJM, Practice Management and Project Management exam, look at a PL statement in terms of what important information do we need to extract from this statement that tells us how we're doing in a firm. That's ultimately what NCARB wants you to understand is to be business savvy once you are in a firm in those roles as a principal, as a project manager. How can you help the firm stay sustainable? And what are those terms that you need to be looking for, not just at the project level, but at the team level and eventually maybe even at the firm level? So understanding this PL statement will help you then apply the various terminology that we've used to the seven financial indicators that will tell us the health of our business. And I already have a video on the seven key financial indicators, which I will link here. And those seven key financial indicators are seven formulas that you would apply from actual numbers extracted from the PL statement. It's that simple. So understanding the PL statement, how is it organized? And then using that video, the seven key financial indicators to practice the various terms to be able to extract how your firm is doing. And now we get to the point of our review. Before we do our review, I want to let you know that if you are interested in coaching or fast tracking your ARE 5.0 or your CSE California Supplemental Exam process and need help, please reach out to us at the email provided here. And in your subject line of your email, please state your full name and the next exam that you're planning to take. And then in the body of the email, please let us know a little about yourself and your licensure journey and what kind of help you're looking for. Let's get back to the review. And you can leave your answers in the comments below. The first question, describe the following terms in your own words, total revenue, net operating revenue, and profit. Number two, what's the difference of direct and indirect expenses? Provide some examples. Number three, if a firm generates 1.5 million in total revenue and 45% of it is utilized for reimbursable expenses and consultant fees, what is the firm's net operating revenue? If the firm has eight employees, what is the net revenue per employee? 
And number four, this is an open-ended question, but it's going to help you think about how to apply the P&L. For number three, is the net revenue per employee good or can the firm improve its net revenue per employee? Please explain. I want to take a second to thank you all who've been on this channel with me. We just celebrated our three-year anniversary this year. Three years ago today, I was just like you, frustrated, confused, and not knowing how to study for these exams, and this channel was born. For those of you who are watching these videos and finding value in them, the analytics show that a large percentage of you are here but not subscribed. So please take a moment to subscribe to the channel, uh, like the videos, leave a comment, give it a thumbs up. I can't tell you how much it helps this channel grow. As you all know, YouTube has its own algorithm and the more visibility, the more traffic, the more engagement that you all have with the channel helps grow the channel, creates more visibility, which in turn creates more resources for us to be able to create more educational tools for you because that's what we love doing and we love seeing you all succeed. So thank you if you've been here on this channel. I just recently passed my licensure exams here in California. So I know where you're at. I've been there, I've been in your shoes. And I know how you feel when it comes to preparing for these exams. So if you have any questions, you can also reach out to me. I'll, I'll leave my contact information at the end of the video.